Hello and welcome to Pittsburgh Research. Today we're joined by Peter Himes, Chief Strategic Officer at 40 Years Memory. That's right. Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> I was glad to see you. Um, so you're in town for uh, Semiconductor Australia 2024, so we uh, thought we'd uh, take the opportunity to have a chat with you. Yeah, terrific. Do you want to talk about what's, uh, what's happening at 40 years? For people that don't know the story, can you sort of do a quick recap? What is 40 years? What do you guys do? And uh, where are you sort of in, in a journey? Yeah, sure. Uh, 40S is a memory technology company um, that's pioneering a new type of re-RAM technology uh, that's uh, called PCMO. Uh, it's an area-based uh, technology that has some unique advantages. It's very high speed, high endurance, um, and low energy. And uh, we've been developing this technology for quite a while. Uh, we've hit some good milestones. I think last year about this time is when we announced uh, the results of the last mm -hmm. uh, processing lot that came out. And that was the basis of our news uh, back then. Uh, we're here for Semiconductor Australia. We actually have some new lots that are coming out that are just beginning testing. So. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the development strategy and specifically about the fifth and the sixth platform lot, what that means? And yeah. for, for people that sort of are not sort of familiar with the intricacies of, of development. For sure. So the fifth and the sixth lots uh, that are going through FAB and the fifth lot is out right now. Um, have uh, a number of different objectives. Um, the, the baseline um, objective for the lot is just to show that the technology is repeatable. Mm -hmm. That the uh, results that we came out with last year were not a fluke, uh, and that this actually is a <clears throat> solid baseline process uh, that we can show consistent repeatable results. Uh, beyond that, if we see improvements, and that of course would be um, icing on the cake. Uh, and the second part of it is to be able to refine and hone the process in order to um, have the results come out with more consistency and less variability, I guess you can say. Um, we're also preparing for the sixth lot, which will be showing that we can scale this down to this 20 nanometer size. Right. Um, and there's some, you know, there's some variations, experiments in this lot that uh, help us uh, inform those you know, that future decisions. Right. Yeah, I had a question about that. Uh, yeah. So you were uh, manufacturing the 15 while you were still sort of developing the sixth. Is that right? Yeah, so a lot of the, tech, the underlying technology is the same um, in terms of how you go about and doing the processing. Mm -hmm. So we can you know, move some of those things along in parallel. <laughs> but um, you know, one of the things that uh, is true with any kind of process development, especially in semiconductors, is that you need to um, you know you need to stage your bets, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to hold things up, um, let the first lot come through, take a look at it. And that's your opportunity to make any fixes if they're needed. Yeah. Uh, that's just always a smart way of doing it. Yeah. Whether you're 40S or you're TSMC, they all do it the same way. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. The fifth lot is in FAB, but it's you know kind of waiting for um, us to take a look at. Um, I mean, the sixth lot is in FAB. We're waiting to, for us to take a look at this slot that's just come out. Uh, to see if there's any uh, any final changes. You can still sort of implement that in the sixth lot. And we, yeah, and Jane has to. Yeah, and this yes. is. And some of the processing has already been done, like I said, but this is really about uh, refining that based on you know, whatever lines we can get. Yeah, okay. And so you're expecting results from the fifth note back pretty soon. What do you expect yeah. to see there? Like I said, consistency. What are you hoping not to see? You know, first off, um, you know, the, this stuff is already in testing, and we can see that it's um, under test, and it's you know not completely dead. So, so no, the first uh, thing we're looking for is consistency. Uh, consistency in results and consistency in performance. Right. Um, and then there's variations, like I said, which will inform us for, for moving forward, see if we can get any kind of improvements based on what we can see. Yeah, and when you talk about consistency, how does that reflect in the test results? So, so what, what different metrics will you be looking at? We always look at three basic things. Uh, look at um, switching speed, um, the endurance, you know, there's how many times you can switch the cell on and off, uh, and then the persistence, what's the retention of that cell right. for different programming conditions. So one of the unique things about our technology is that that retention um, can be can be tuned, can, can be varied, you know, to, based on how hard that you program the cell. Uh, so that relationship is something else we've got. Right. And is there any, a, in those metrics, is there any sort of baseline that you, the, the minimum requirement that you want that you're really looking for? Uh, like, for instance, with retention, it could be 10 years or it could be 50 years, depending on, yeah. on how you tweak it. Um, I guess the same with endurance. Um, but what, what's, what's sort of the baseline for you guys to, uh, to get to in, in these, all with the fifth and the sixth one? So, um, switching speeds is at least as fast as DRAM. Yep. Um, 
you know, persistence from hours to, to days, to months. So one hour is kind of our, our, our baseline um, uh, metric that we use to characterize the cells. Um, and then, um, uh, to, and then endurance is the third thing. Great. Yeah. Okay. And so the uh, the six month the development of that should be done sort of in December. Uh, towards the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Might spill up to the beginning of the new year, depending on, you know, but we're also uh, dependent on IMEC processing, and mm -hmm. you know, over the holidays, sometimes you things go slower than you expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Especially in, in Belgium, I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but once that's done, how long do you see, what, what sort of timeline do you have for manufacturing and then for testing, potentially qualification? So, what, what are you looking at once it's going, it's going into IMAX fab? Um, once we get the stuff out of the fab in the beginning of next year, it's about a two-month cycle in order Okay, so, so it's coming out of the fab in early next year. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, so it'd be maybe end of the first quarter when we actually can tell how that lot has performed. You know, beyond that, then, um, you know, the next steps for the company, you know, this is a technology development. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just the, the memory technology by itself. Um, so after that, you have to actually put that into a, a macro, design a, a cell mm -hmm. in order to optimally drive it. Uh, and also, the, you know, how to communicate it, you know, how to, you know, what's going to be the programming protocol, all, all that logic stuff that has to be figured out. Right. Um, and that will be done, you know, our, our goal is to do that with a partner um, that um, will work with us in terms of, you know, tuning that memory technology for a specific application. That could be a two-year process, you know, frankly speaking. Yeah, right. from the start of those discussions, through the circuit design, through the uh, optimization of the cell, uh, to get something that can actually you know, test either in a circuit or as a standalone memory chiplet or whatever. Correct. Yeah. So that brings me to the next question um, about sort of the, the roadmap for development in 2025 mm -hmm. and maybe even 2026. So mm -hmm. you, you sort of alluded to it already, but mm -hmm. what, what's sort of the, at a high level, sort of the roadmap for 4DS in the next two years? Right now, we don't anticipate doing more of these platform lots. Um, that could change, um, you know, in terms of what we're doing with uh, with the existing iMEC um, uh, development tools, mm -hmm. development platform that we have. Yeah. Um, you know, ideally, we would uh, be identifying that partner or uh, coming to terms with a partner in terms of bringing that to um, uh, near the product stage, if mm -hmm. you will. Know. So from the technology stage to the product stage. Uh, and that involves this uh, circuit design for the macro and by the logic, you know, in order to interface and to drive that memory cell and then actually putting it into either a test memory array or an actual chip. Right. So that, um, you know, for 20, 25, 2026, that's what we would like to see happen. Right. Okay. And that would um, be a joint, right? So that would yeah. be that would be moving from our own internal development in terms of the base technology to hopefully something we're working in partnership with somebody, you know, in terms of taking that to the next uh, product stage. Right. That would be a significant um, step up for 4DS, yeah. or you could say. Yeah. But that wouldn't be, would that be with iMac potentially or with We would still use iMac on the back end. So, you know, so mm -hmm. iMac is, even with iMac, it's a, it's a seamless wafer in the front mm -hmm. and then, you know, iMac does the um, back end yeah. processing. We put our memory cell between two metal layers, um, of course, with our technology mm -hmm. and our top and bottom electrode, all that other stuff. Um, so that would be the same process uh, with any any other advanced CMOS fab. Right. This is why we say that we're very confident that our our technology can be transferred to any existing fab because um, of the way it's been designed and how we're currently working. We're actually already kind of doing that. Yeah. Okay. So, so last question in terms of um, commercialization slash sort of you know, the the strategic sort of end game for for 40s. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. How do you see that play out um, in terms of commercialization or sort of going in a strategic way? Uh, maybe at a uh, mm -hmm. high level, what, what, what the plans are there? You know, I think as a company of our size and what we're doing, um, we always plan for, um, you know, for continued, uh, you know, continued development of our technology. So um, we, you know, we plan to be working on developing this uh, like, as I said, this macro cell and working on coming up with a test chip or an actual in-chip implementation of the technology. Uh, and then if somebody comes along and says, you know, we'll just acquire 4DS and we'll take it internally so that we can accelerate this and actually own the whole technology, then, um, then that would be great. But 
you know, you don't um, you don't plan around selling the company. You mm-hmm. plan around success, and then other things can happen. Right. Uh, okay. That's, least that's my philosophy. Towards right. It. Yeah. You plan basically for commercialization, and then if anything comes along, and yeah, you yeah. look at that. Yeah, sure. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, All always, right. Always a pleasure to have you. Yeah, always a pleasure to come out uh, to Sydney. Yeah, Perfect. We're looking forward to this conference tomorrow for Semiconductor Australia. We think that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's it's overdue to be able to establish this kind of, um, I could say, critical mass of semiconductor companies in the, in the market here. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.